This video is brought to you by Osmocote, the planter's plant food. Hi, I'm Mary Ann Bonetti and I'm in the purple part of my garden. Now here I've used an old door and then I spray painted a mailbox deep purple. I've got my purple painted tools. I've got more tools with purple on them. And we're in my purple gloves, of course. And this is all in celebration of my favorite purple clematis. Now clematis or clematis do not need a lattice. Here I'm showing you the purple jacamani clematis and this is probably the easiest to grow most vigorous of all the clematis and I'm using it to scramble through an evergreen hedge. A lot of people have boring evergreen hedges not necessary to have no color simply use them as a framework for your clematis. Now the Jacobini clematis is so vigorous it'll also bloom in a semi-shaded area and the important thing everybody wants to know how do you prune a clematis? Well when it comes to a Jacobini clematis I'm happy to say it doesn't matter. I've pruned this in the fall, I've pruned it in the spring, I pruned it in the summer and still it'll survive. The important thing is that it has a cool root run. What that means is that the roots are in a shaded area so on the shaded side of the hedge is where you plant the clematis it'll grow up and reach for the sun. And the second thing is do not let the roots dry out and do not over fertilize. In fact I found that if you fertilize a clematis while it is in blood if you use a really strong like liquid type fertilizer you're going to cause those buds to actually fall off the plant. Instead I use just a slow release fertilizer, something like Osmocote in the spring and that's it. Clematis are not heavy feeders. So I hope this helps inspire you. I've got another purple Jacobini Clematis blooming in the shade over here and climbing through a, uh, another shrub and I use the purple Clematis all over my garden because it's carefree summer color that anybody can do. This has been Mary Ann Bonetti reminding you to keep growing.